the mark of silence held across Europe earlier today. Well, what of the international response to the attacks? As we've heard, France retaliated overnight with airstrikes bombing Islamic State targets in the Syrian city of Raqqa, and security has been stepped up along the French border. Over the weekend, UKIP's defence spokesman, Mike Hookham, called on European leaders to hang their heads in shame and declared the Schengen Agreement dead. I spoke to him earlier today. I began by asking what he meant by Schengen being dead. We know that these people, I mean, I was in uh, in northern France, Calais, the jungle, uh, in August, and, you know, I, I reported then people traffickers uh, using false passports, getting people into the country, filling them up in cars and vehicles. We now have a situation where ISIS, these terrorists, have identified a weakness in our security and are taking full advantage of that weakness. Of course, we are not part of that borderless Europe in the same We do have border checks. Yes, we do, but they should be strengthened. In what way? More security, more people on the borders, more passport checks. Uh, and, and that's and, being and done... vehicle checks. That's being done, the Home Secretary has announced that there is well, going to be... He's announced that today, but that has only just happened after what's happened this weekend. But back to the Schengen Agreement you say is dead, do you mean now that borderless Europe is over, that it... there are going to be border controls set up on all continental European countries? Yes, we've seen it. France are now uh, bringing back the border controls. Other countries are bringing back border controls. And this is what, I, what we have to do. You know, these people are taking advantage of our weakness in security and they're going to keep carrying on taking advantage of that security. You also slammed European leaders who actively encouraged the migrant crisis and said they should hang their heads in shame. What do you mean in terms of the migrant crisis in relation to what happened in Paris? Nigel Farage said in April that this, you know, this was going to happen, that the ISIS were going to flood the, the continent with, with terrorists and with freedom fighters, uh, and that's come true. Uh, and, and as I said, in August, when I was over there in, in northern France, I was saying then that this was a weak point and people were coming in, and some of these people, not all, but some of these people could be ISIS terrorists. But when you look at what happened in Paris and the identification of the suicide bombers uh, that have been made public, only one has been linked and even yet, that is still yet to be completely formally established to the migrant crisis. The others were homegrown terrorists. But they are being supplied and there's more people coming in to, to, to bolster up their numbers. Do you think this attack wouldn't have happened if there hadn't been a flow of refugees and migrants from Libya to Greece and through Europe? I'm saying it, it's been helped by the, uh, the flow of migrants coming in and, and the lack of, of checks and security on the borders. So when you say that European leaders who actively encourage the migrant crisis should hang their heads in shame, are you thinking primarily about Angela Merkel? Merkel, Schultz, uh, Junkers. You know, as, as I said, in April, Nigel Farage stood up in the parliament and said that this was a, a likelihood, a, a real chance of this happening, and he was laughed at and derided by these people, and now it's come true. Is this a time to be making party political points so soon well, after 130 people, nearly 130 people? Is it a party political point? People? These people, I mean, this was tragic. When I'm sat there on, on, the, you know, on the night looking at what was going on across in France, it's, this is absolute tragedy. This was shocking. But as politicians, we have to be looking to the future and we have to be looking at what weaknesses on the on the borders. And, and we was highlighting these weaknesses and, you know, and people should step up now and say, yeah, we got this wrong. Some of the statements by UKIP members, including Deputy Chairman Suzanne Evans, have blamed Islam for the attacks. Is that defensible? This is... This is about a small minority of people who have a warped sense of Islam. Right, but she's tweeted, will politicians finally admit that the Paris... I'm not going to defend Paris... Susan Evans on this programme. You know, I'm stating now there is a small number of, of, you know, Islamic terrorists who have a warped sense of Islam. Was she wrong, then, to say, will politicians finally admit that the Paris attacks well, had something to do with Islam? Well, I will have to defend herself. I'm not here to defend her. Right, but you don't think she was right to say it, 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 was, it was Islam, in some way, that was to blame? Well, there are, as I said, there are, there are a small number of these terrorists who have a warped sense of Islam. Now, Nigel Farage will be giving a speech on foreign policy tonight. Can we expect any changes to UKIP policy? No, I think, I think Nigel will be himself and it will be strong on, uh, on these messages that he's been sending out for many months. Right, but, but what will he be proposing 
other than what you I have said seen, today? I haven't seen Nigel's speech. I haven't spoken to him this weekend. What would you like to? Well, what would you like to hear from him? What sort of tone do you think he should strike? Well, he's got to he's got to have a, a tough tone on you know on the foreign policy and what's happening in Syria. And and as we've been saying, uh, you know, this has to be. A, a grand coalition of the countries and bring in Russia, bring in China, NATO, the Arab nations to fight against ISIS. Do you think we should be bombing ISIS in Syria? Bombing is, is all well and good if there is a strategy at the end of it. You know, wholesale bombing is not going to work. You know, then there has to be a, a strategy to the end. There has to be troops on the ground. Who those troops are, I don't know, whether they be NATO troops, Russian troops, but there has to be troops on the ground. Would you like to see NATO come in at this stage? I mean, France I did NATO, call it an act of war. Which it would is an act of war, and I think NATO has to get involved. Thank you. Thank you very much.